Hi, I'm Shane Larson from Grizzly Peak Software, LLC. Today I'm going to teach you about how to build an API gateway using Nginx. What is Nginx? So Nginx is an open source web server that was designed with the purpose of being the world's fastest web server. And it has been known by many to be called the world's fastest web server, but also it's a load balancer, a reverse and forward proxy, and a cache manager, as well as other things such as an API gateway. For those of you who don't know what an API gateway is, essentially it is just software that sits in front of an API and it acts as a single point of entry for that API and it enters into a group of one or more microservices. Basically, it's glue code for multiple APIs. And what's great about Nginx is because it's a load balancer and an API gateway, you can accomplish this while also scaling multiple microservices into a single API gateway. And as you can see here in this illustration, Nginx is serving as a single entry point for two APIs. We'll show you how to set this up. So for this example, these are the microservices that we will use for the API gateway. You can see that we have two IP addresses. Actually, they're both running on the same server in this example. Yet, one is on port 8081 and the other is on port 8082. Each is a different microservice. These could be on multiple different servers or any given port. The next step is to just simply configure the API gateway. We do that by editing the default configuration file for Nginx. In it, you can see here in the configuration that we have this IP address in port 8081 labeled as the shipping microservice. That is also known as the upstream directive in Nginx upstream and then whatever it's being directed to be essentially it's telling it that that server and that port correlates to the label of shipping which we can see down here now here we're running on port 80 so it's not encrypted in this example yet you can completely encrypt this then we set two locations and those represent routes at on port 80 of the Nginx web server. So here we could see we're passing to the proxy HTTP slash slash shipping, which is actually the upstream directive that we defined. And here we have one for reporting because this is the reporting microservice and the proxy just passes the traffic to the reporting microservice using the upstream directive. It's very simple once you understand the concept, and if you keep your configuration file clean and um, make sure that you effectively configure it, then everything should be fine. But the one good thing to know here is in upstream directives, you can have more than one server, and that will allow you to use load balancing and essentially stack these servers under the upstream directive of shipping, if that makes any sense. So not only can you scale within Nginx, but you also have a way to glue multiple microservices together into a single API, which is an API gateway. So one of the great benefits of Nginx is its ability to hot reload the config file. So on when many web servers, uh, when you make a configuration change like we just did, uh, essentially you have to reload the, the service that's running the app pool or, or uh, the thread that your application is running on. So if it's in Node.js, you may have to, to bump the service, right? Or if it's IIS, you might have to refresh the app pool. Well, here we can use um, the service engine x reload command at the command line. 
and it will just reload the configuration file in Nginx without restarting or disrupting the microservices that are already running on it. So as you can imagine, this gives you immense power because not only can you use Nginx to change the dynamics of your microservice API gateway on the fly using things like DevOps tools and automation, maybe you have automations connected to a monitoring application the monitoring application determines that you need more capacity it creates a new microservice dynamically in a container for example it sets up the configuration file for the scalability of the engine x load balancer inside of your api gateway and then you can hot reload and basically users don't get dropped at all. Um, there may be a small impact uh, and you know if you're running under load there's probably a lot that you need to also consider. If you're running a ton of users through a single Nginx instance you still have to consider the fact that you're running through one point. Anyway, this is how that works. It gives you immense power. Not only can you scale up or down, but you can re reconfigure microservices on the fly with Nginx. So the next log logical step after we hot reload the uh, microservice API gateway is we test it. And in this example, it's actually running on a local host instance. And you can see here, it actually is hitting port 8081 here. Uh, because the API gateway is running on the local machine on port 8081. So that could be a bit confusing, yet just bear with me. So then you have shipping slash heartbeat. Heartbeat is the method call of the API, obviously. Shipping was that directive, the upstream directive that we created earlier. So that is a route in the API. And you can see it corresponds to port 8081, which was what we saw in the configuration file earlier. Now we're on the same Nginx API gateway on the reporting upstream directive or route. I call it a route. Um, other people call them other things, controllers, um, things, things like that. Um, the, if it was model view controller, this would be the controller probably, and this would be the um, action method or the API call. And so here we have port 8082 based on what was uh, corresponding to the reporting microservice in that config file. So here you can see it demonstrated that we took two APIs, the shipping microservice and the reporting microservice, glued them together into one URL. And imagine the power of that in creating flexible infrastructures for apps. So if you need an Alexa app, then you just need these three services to talk to it. You can use this technology to add um, the flexibility of quickly creating that infrastructure. Also, by not exposing everything in your backend, to the API gateway, you limit your security threat vector. Um, also, it's just highly configurable, right? And easy to change. So based on that, it makes sense to use an API gateway for certain things. Now, when you run into concurrent messaging problems, uh, sometimes at high levels of traffic, API gateways can become a choke point for your application. So in your testing, since this is the slide about testing, you should also load test your API gateway and monitor it constantly. And you can put these inside, you can, you can put Nginx inside of a container and spin up more of them if you need. And as you can see, from the config file thing, it's actually really easy to automate this. You don't even really have to manually do it. You can let a program create a new API gateway for you. In review, we went over how to use Nginx, which is by some considered to be the world's fastest web browser and load balancer and 
API gateway. It also has caching mechanisms and other features. Um, we saw how easy it was to set up the configuration file and run Nginx in a Linux environment so that you could use it as an API gateway with a flexible config and hot reload as needed. And we also showed you how you can test this and gave you some pointers on how to test your API gateway. Some other things to look into after this is uh, the, the subject of message brokers, which is a different approach to how APIs speak to one another at scale. So it's very important to look at something like that. A message broker uses um, usually a queue system and a message transmission system to basically allow for expanding and contracting volumes and kind of buffer from that. So those are both really good technology ideas. They should be used in combination in certain situations, or you can go with one, but if you run into limitations with one, such as the API gateway, um, could be a choke point for your application. Uh, maybe switching to a message broker is a, is a good solution for you. Those are things you need to consider. Thank you for watching my video. My name is Shane Larson. I'm the CEO of Grizzly Peak Software in Anchorage, Alaska. I hope that you enjoyed this and found it useful.